There's the lineup for this women's 3,000 meter race coming up. It's always interesting for the distance runners what they choose to do around about this time of year. Do they stick to the cross country? Do they stick to the roads? Do they go indoors? Moments away. And uh, to give you a bit of context to those wave lights on the screen, to the bottom left of the screen, I'm sure you've noticed it long before I mentioned it, but those green wave lights at 8.35, so 68 high each lap. And there's a red wave light around about that 8.50 mark as well for these women. So way nice and smoothly. And the reason you're seeing a, a wave light around about that 8.50 is I think we've got a few French athletes, a few domestic athletes who want to tick off that mark. But the World Indoor Qualifying Time, 8 minutes in 37 seconds. Not hanging around at all. But uh, quickly the field breaking up here through this opening 200 meters. And Almiu right on the Pacers hill. And it's just, let's see how long they sit there. Let's see how long they sit and wait. Will they get bored? Will they look to push on? It's early days, 33.5, so 67 on the nose. Well, that is uh, 67 for the 400, that would be. That's very, very quick running indeed. That's around about 8.21 pace for the 3,000 meters. Interested to see Georgia Bell happy to go with the field. Marta Perez taking a little bit more of a careful, sensible approach there. The Spaniard right on those green wave lights, and I'm sure they know the pace of those green, green wave lights is going to be 8.35. And that's not hanging around at all. So the athletes just checking in. The pace is just settling in as well. We've got a nice train here at the meeting. De Lourdes, Val de Roy at the Jesse Owens Stadium. So these women will enjoy this. Nice and smooth early doors. But what they won't enjoy, always you see it in 3,000 meter running, don't you? That first 200, very quick. And then they slow to kind of get on the lights. But the pacer needs to be aware of that and needs to, needs to pick it back up again. Because if you settle in at 35s, for each 200, well, that's 70s, and that's a little bit slower than the pace requested. So, Sembo Almiu, there she is in the yellow and green. The yellow spikes, easy to identify, look comfortable at the moment. The uh, steeplechaser by trade on the track, hunting that personal best of 8.35, and of course, inside that world indoor qualifying mark of 8.37. Those standards getting harder and harder and harder. Athletes having to be reliant on ranking position in these distance events. They're only accepting 15 athletes to uh, the world. It's time. Well, coming up for a month's time, actually. It's the uh, 1st of March, isn't it? That gets underway, so you know, my date's a little bit muddled. But uh, in third place there, that's Lydia Legat of Kenya. She's the one I was saying. She's a former 800 meter specialist. Very, very good flat speed, 201 over 800. 407, 1500, lifetime best. A little naive to the 3000. Hasn't competed indoors before over this distance. Excited to see what she can do, but we're being put on a little bit of a show at the moment by Almiu. Still ahead of those, or just hanging on to those green lights. And we've got a fantastic pack. Georgia Bell looking smooth. I said she was undefeated in 2024 already. She moves up into third place, moves past the Ethiopian Almaz, who, in fact, in 2018, was a world champion over the 1500, under 20 world champion over the 1500, but uh, it's still a very, very strong level indeed. And Georgia Bell, well, maybe she has got an eye on that world indoor qualifying mark or getting as close to it as possible. That 403 indoors, that was a front running job as well in Dortmund last weekend. So she want to build off that. I mean, I have, if you can front run 403, you've got to be looking at that four minute barrier in a, in a paced race, especially these wave like technology. It's been a bit of a revelation indoors. Well, not just indoors, but in distance running in general. Pace of pulls aside in 34.80. Well, Almiu on her own. She'll have to get comfortable being here. She's going to be there for the next few kilometers or so. And we're going to come up to that halfway mark next time around. So that will give us a good indication of what these athletes are on for. She looks relaxed. She may come under threat from Georgia Bell, who just seems to be closing up on her at the moment. She's now on her own, Georgia Bell. Lydia Legat and uh, Marta Perez. Marta Perez, an experienced distance runner, especially at this level, doing a good job just to hang on to Legat there. And uh, perhaps those two will have Georgia Bell to key off over these next few laps. Georgia Bell's putting herself out there in second place, but looks very, very smooth. And 
Oh, Almiu just losing those lights at the moment. She looked to try and get things moving on early on. But 4.18 at the halfway mark. That's bang on 8.36, 8.37, 3,000 meters meter pace. But not if she slows like she's doing at the moment. Well, if you're a British distance running fan, you're getting very, very excited because Georgia Bell, undefeated in 2024, is now going to come up onto the shoulder of Sembo Almiu, who is an accomplished distance runner. One of the very best to take to the steeplechase in 2023. You want a Diamond League? Which, as we know, is a big deal in the sport of track and field. So, Almiu was once on her own. She's now joined by Georgia Bell. What does Georgia Bell do here? She can't be intimidated. She needs to stay fearless like she has all season long. And almost go by her. If she feels Almiu slowing enough, she should go by and keep an eye on those lights because there could be a World Indoor qualifying mark up for grabs here. But she's more focused on the win at the moment. She's going to stay there in second and just sit on the shoulder of Almiu, who's clearly struggling. She must be. To have dropped the lights like this and to have slowed over, the, uh, slowed over the last few laps like she has. Perez now moves up into third past Lydia Legat. So the Brit Bell leads the way. Very nice stride about her just pitter-pattering along. Almiu in second. She's going to have to focus. She's going to have to dial it in. She's just as quick as Bell over 1,500, if not quicker. But she cannot live with this pace. And it's interesting, is it, with the Ethiopians and the Kenyans? Just how, how well do they travel over to these European meetings? Not making any excuses because Georgia Bell is doing a fantastic job. It's key into these lap splits now. Ladies and gentlemen, we get another one when they come back round because we're coming up. We're inside that last kilometer. We're going to come up to 800 meters to go. And that will give us a good indication of what we're on for. Marta Perez. I said she's playing a canny game back there in second or third early on. She's moved her way up into second. She's going to give chase to Georgia Bell, who perhaps surprisingly finds herself at the front of this field with 800 to go. Another 35 lap clocking. So she's on for a massive lifetime best, ladies and gentlemen. She ran 906 for 3,000 at the back end of 2023. But boy, has she wintered well. Yeah, also looking threatening there in third place. But Almiu out the back door. Well, and Almas, we thought she would be a threat with an 8.37 lifetime best. She was long gone in this one. So the two Ethiopians really struggling here in France today. 600 meters to go. Three laps to the track. It's Bell, it's Perez, and it's Lagat. Those three, they haven't always been there. But Bell looking smooth, and there seems to be no sign of weakness at the moment. She's just piling it on. She's just extending her lead just by a meter or two each lap, and she needs to hold that because if she gives Perez a sniff at this stage in the race, a 4 minute 1500 meter runner, she's going to gain confidence. She's going, she's going to want to attack and close that gap at Bell, but 400 to go. It's Bell's race to lose, ladies and gentlemen. Well, 7.35, if she can string a 70. She's going to be inside 8.45. We hope she is. That's a massive mark. That's a meteoric run from Georgia Bell. She is putting on a show here. She's announcing herself to the world. She's unsponsored, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I don't think for long. I can tell you that. There's going to be big points up for grabs as well. She's an athlete. It was a very good junior. Had a bit of time away from the sport. Does enjoy getting out on the bike, doing some long rides as well. I understand she uh, includes a lot of cross-training into her program, but is under a bit of guidance to Trevor Painter at the moment, and it's clearly working. Those of you who aren't familiar with Painter, coaches Keely Hodgkinson, one of the best 800-meter runners in the world right now. No questions about that. No questions about Georgia Bell at the front of this race. Look at her go. She's just piled it on. She's on for a massive lifetime best. Hasn't broken nine minutes for 3,000 meters before. She's undefeated in 2024. She's going to be three for three here at the meeting. The lure. She's going to pick up all the spoils, all the prize money. He's going to go to this young lady. Fantastic running. Get used to the name. Wow, look at the clocking. 8.42.1, ladies and gentlemen. On her own for the last 1,500 meters or so of that race as well. Solo, she's chuffed. Well, is there anything she can't do? She's looking stronger and stronger every time she steps onto the track. And now she'll be eyeing up a British title in that distance. Of course, we've got Laura Muir. But oof, to do that in that fashion, pretty much solo that last kilometer, arguably the hardest part of the race as well. I'm very excited to what she can do. 
I'm sure a few on the world stage are looking at that and thinking we could have someone else to worry about in these distance events over the next five, six months. And isn't it funny what an Olympic year can do to athletes? They come out from the woodwork. Perez, obviously, season's best for her, 8.48. Lydia Legat there, 8.49. And Almi, who died all the way down to 8.56.